Kunesti Howie. Welcome back to the Candlelit Tales podcast where we tell Irish myths and chat about them sometimes. We have a very special episode this week, a collaboration with the wonderful musician Connie Dawson, aka the street harpist on socials. We have always been delighted to collaborate with musicians and artists and Connie has been bugging us for years after our live shows to send her a version of this story so she can put music to it. The story of the Dogda's Harp. This podcast is proudly supported by our Patreon supporters. If you'd like to contribute, you can find us on patreon.com forward slash candlelit tales. Like, subscribe, share if you care, and above all, enjoy. I'll shut up now and tell you a story. The story of the Dogda's Harp. Collaboration with Connie. The Dagda was known as the Good God, the great and brilliant, the wise and mirth-filled Dagda. Not always good in everything he did, but often known as being good at everything he did. And he was very, very good playing music. With his harp, the four-angled Uthna, he played the seasons interchanging, He knew the song of summer that played slowly into autumn, the darkening song of winter, and the life that would be brought back into the song of spring. With this music, he brought in the seasons and the changing of the tides, and we always listen out for the music of the Douglas harp on the winds. But back when the two of the Danon were in this land, they landed and fought with the four Morians, the Fuimwira, the people under the sea. The second battle of the Moichura, it was called. And although the two of they had sharp, brilliant, piercing weapons and agile movements, they were governed by Lu and would face this fight brilliantly and ferociously with bravery in their hearts. But the four Morians, and Balor of the evil eye. Now, the Dagda could always use his harp to instill fearlessness and victory into the hearts of his listeners. So every morning of the fight against the Fomorians, he played this fearless music into their hearts. And when they listened, they joined the fight fearlessly indeed. And each night, the Dagda would play the song of sorrow, and the music would let all of those who had seen the death of their brothers and brethren feel the heartache and release it into the ground, crying tears of sadness so they could sleep soundly that night. And once more in the morning, the Dagda would play a victorious song so the heroes of the two a day could go into battle once more. A small faction of the Fomorians they decided the best way to defeat the Tua de Danon was to steal the Dagda's harp. Of course, they had seen other heroes doing fantastic feats. They thought if they eliminated the music that the Dagda was giving the Tua de Danon, the Formorians would surely win. And so a small faction crept into the Dagda's home one night and they stole away Uthna. But When they ran up north and cowered into an abandoned castle up in the northern shores where they were close to the Tory Island where they came from, they didn't expect the news to travel so fast of Balor's defeat. Lou's long throw with his long hand and how the rest of the Formorian faction had been plunged into the dark waves. A defeat they could hardly believe. But when the Dagda came back and he saw his harp was missing, he had no celebratory music to play. And although many of the heroes had been killed, he could not sing or play the music of sadness on the harp that had been stolen. So he turned to Lou and the healer of the two a day, Dean Kecht, and asked them what they should do. Dean Kecht, the physician and a very studious man 
observe the tracks in the ground and said the thieves had gone to the north and that's where they should go to. So Lou, the Dagda and the Inkect, they made their way following the tracks in the ground and they noticed the heavier set tracks, surely those that had been made by those who were carrying Udna, the magical harp of the Dagda. When they came to the abandoned castle that the tracks led themselves into, they spied through a crack in the door a host of the Formorian army, not defeated, the ones that had ran away. And then the Dagda saw Uthna on the far wall. There, just past all of the Formorians who lay fast asleep on the floor of the banquet hall inside the castle wall. Now Dean Kecht studied a small set of steps. He thought that perhaps if they managed to tiptoe their way all the way around the sleeping, fearsome, deadly Formorians, they could simply pick up Uthna and carry it back. He fancied his chances at that, at least. Lou decided that was a poor idea. A simple knock of one of their weapons on the floor would wake them all. Any misstep, any misguided attempt would surely end in their destruction. And since they were so outnumbered, what they should do was climb up into the rafters above the hall and climb along it until they got to the wall itself, pick up Uthna and carry it back the way he had come and he fancied his chances of doing this as well. Dean Kecht and Lou began to argue then as which approach was the better approach and the Dagda stopped listening. He only had his eyes for Uthna on the wall. When he uttered the words, Uthna, come to me. The harp itself leapt off the wall and sprang, flying across the hall and into the outstretched arms of the Dagda, who grasped the four-angled harp with pleasure and glee. However, when he had shouted, Uthna, come to me, the whole host of the Formorians had awoken, dark eyes glaring, Dark hands stretching now for their darkened weapons and spears to throw at Lou, the Inkect and the Dagda. And as they clambered to their feet, Lou and the Inkect asked the Dagda to play something on the harp that would help them. And in that moment, the Dagda began to strum his fingers, not worrying or wishing to cast a spell but hoping the Uothna would do just that and the music that flowed from his fingertips as he began well it was the song of sadness and this song brought heartache to everyone who heard it and all of the host of the Formorians began to weep with sadness and grief all of the memories of their lost ones the ones who had died any Darkness inside them at all came bubbling up and blurting out in tears and snot and drivel and they crumpled in on the floor hugging each other and even Lou and the Inkect began to sniffle until the Dagda came to the close of this particular tune and the Formorians picked themselves up curious as to what had happened not quite sure why they were hugging each other and Definitely not wanting to admit that they were crying many moments before. They leapt back with their darkened eyes now glaring and their hands clutching at their spears and axes, rushing now towards the door, towards Lou and the Inkect and the Dagda. Of course, his two friends asked the Dagda once more to play something that would be useful and the Dagda's hands began to glide over the strings, a tune coming into his head from where he did not know but his hands began to move in no slow pace and the tune of mirth and glee came to him then and a grin around his ears began to spread as he began to play such an uplifting tune that everyone who heard it was indeed enveloped with the mirth of the tune and so much so that the Fomorians dropped their spears and the heavy axes 
They began to hop and to skip, to laugh and to jovial, carry themselves about in such a performance of glee they hadn't felt so light in such a long time. Even Lou and the Enkect were dancing in and around them, hugging, jumping, lifting, skipping. It was such an almighty time until the tune came to the crescendo and ended. Well, the Formorians remembered they were in fact trying to kill the Dagda and Lou, who they were dancing with, and the Enkect, and they pushed them away, picking up their great spears and darkened axes, heavy now with anger and furious for being played with so much with the music of the Dagda's harp. They went to run at them, to rush at them, and to kill them surely this time until Lou and the Enkect asked the Dagda to do something that would be a bit more permanent, perhaps. And so, the Dagda's hands began to glide up and down the strings of Uthna, and as the song now took its place into the ears of its listeners, a fine tune that made their eyes heavy, their hands grip not so tightly around their spears and axes, they falling to the ground and their muscles feeling so heavy, the strain of sleep seeming to seduce them all, this tune lulling them into comfort warmness, contentedness, and collapse. Each one of the Fuimura lay down their heavy heads, their eyes closed. Snoring was all they heard. Lou and Inkek just barely staying awake as the Dagda finished this beautiful tune. He picked up his two friends, nodding them to tell them to get on their way. It's time to get back to Tara to celebrate with the rest of the Tua Zedanen for the great mirth would be had when the Dagda was finally able to play all of the tunes that were going around his head this day. And Uothna by his side, the four-angled harp, returned once more to his owner. The Dagda brought his harp back to Tara and the celebrations for the rest of the night.